Hey everyone, Eric here. And today I get to share with you an awesome new feature that just came out with our latest release of SketchUp for iPad. It's called Scan to Design, and it allows you to take the real world, like you see behind me, and bring it straight into SketchUp simply and easily using just your iPad. <laughs> So I want to kind of tell you a little bit more about it, but I think I did that in my introduction. Basically, scan to design means scan the real world using the iPad, the camera, and the LiDAR sensor, and then go straight into SketchUp. So that means no other software, no other tools, nothing else you need to install. You're ready to scan right out of the box. So I think the best thing for us to do here is just to scan something. So let's go ahead and scan my studio that I'm in right now together, and I'll show you how it works. So now in the iPad, if you're first opening it, you might see this scan to design blog post. You go ahead and click that to read more. I'm going to skip it because we're going to do it ourselves. So in here, before I start scanning, it's probably a good idea to check my settings. So there's this new box here called scan to design. And we've got two different scan settings. With Canvas, you can toggle it on or off. You can set the mesh level of detail, textures, things like that. With Room Plan, Room Plan is Apple's built in LiDAR scanning software. So it's using the iPad native scanning engine. So again, you can choose whether you want to automatically generate geometry using Room Plan. So once the settings look good and everything's turned on, let's go ahead and use both. I'm going to click the rollout menu and scroll all the way to the bottom and find the scan to design icon. Now, actually, before I do that, I probably want to check my room to make sure that it's ready to be scanned. There's a couple things you can do that'll help. Turning on bright lights so that I've got the best illumination, moving sort of odd pieces of furniture or things that are sort of easy to move, like just to kind of make sure that I've got some clean area, open area, and clean surfaces to scan from. Okay. So now I'm going to click that icon, Scan to Design, and I'm going to be transformed magically into this cool Canvas interface. So I'm being prompted a little bit what to do. Now I know what to do. I can just kind of move up and down. It's going to tell me sort of, it's going to guide me using these little icons on screen. It's sort of like I'm painting a room. I want to start on one side. I want to go up, over, and then down. And then I want to kind of slide over. And then I want to just do that motion over again. So again, it's almost like I'm pretend like I'm painting the wall. I want to go all the way up and then slowly go all the way down, even getting underneath surfaces, like in this case, underneath my table. So I want to make sure that I've got all the geometry there. And then again, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I don't want to double back. I want to kind of keep going in this direction because if you double back, sometimes the geometry scans can get overlaid. So in this case, I might get a little extra as it goes through the glass because it's going to try and scan through the glass, and that's OK. I'm just going to kind of keep going here. I'm using the same method, going up and down, try not to go too fast or else it's going to yell at me. And then same thing, get underneath any table, get behind any furniture that you need to. And I'm almost done here. Luckily, this is a small room. Obviously, if you're doing a much bigger space, it's going to take you a little longer. And we're just about back to where we started. When I'm done, just press that little icon in the bottom right corner, done. It's gonna process, again, depending on the size of the room and the amount of detail in the mesh that you selected in your settings when we first got started, it could take a couple of minutes to do this processing step. Once it's done processing, we're ready to go. Here it is. We've got our scanned model in the iPad and it looks awesome. Now, there's a couple of things that we want to explore in the tags. So when you open it up, you can see pretty quickly that there's a bunch of tags and tag folders already set up for us. One of them is meshes, which is the textures. And then the other one is the room plan, which is just the kind of the straight, clean geometry. That's why we checked to make sure that we had both of those before we started our scanning. Now, as much as I love having SketchUp on the iPad, I'm also a desktop user, so this is kind of a great excuse or opportunity to show off another new feature in this latest version, and it's the direct link to Trimble Connect. I'm going to share this model with myself by posting it to Trimble Connect. If you click on the little icon that has a person and a share, it's going to ask me, do you want to publish? Yes, I do. 
it's going to then say, well, it's already connected to my Trimble Connect drive. It's going to say, where do you want to publish to it? I've got a scans folder. It kind of makes sense. I'm going to put it there. When I'm ready, I say publish. And what it's doing is it's uploading it. Essentially, it's uploading it to the cloud right now. So anyone with access to this Trimble Connect folder or account can just grab this scan instantly. Now that that's done uploading, I'm going to transition over to SketchUp 2024 for desktop. So here we are. Here is the same file. Just real quick, you can see I replaced Sal, the default scale figure for iPad, with myself because it's my office, it's my studio. And the second thing I did was I put a section cut in because it just kind of helps me kind of get in and out without having to see that wall. So there you go. That's what I've done to this file. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. Again, in a little bit more detail, it's easier for me to see it here with these tags and toggle these on and off. I want to start with what's called meshes. So this first one here is a mesh, which means a textured mesh. So I'm going to turn everything off. I'm going to turn room plan off. I'm going to turn surfaces off and just look at meshes for a second. So if, what it means by meshes, if I turn hidden geometry on, you can see that the mesh is just triangulated. So it's scanning all these little details. If I were to turn off my textures, for example, you can see that I actually have this as a mesh in my model. So that's pretty cool. Now, I may not want to actually use this because a wall wouldn't want that many triangles, but it would give me something to reference. I could always draw or remodel. It gives me, tells me how tall this plant is. It goes right here. So that's meshes. I'm going to turn hidden geometry off turn my textures back on. And it was smart enough to sort of break them up into pieces. So you can see here that like objects in space are my furniture versus the room itself. So again, if you need to like turn off a chair or something like that and maybe model just the wall, you can sort of toggle back and forth between those. So I'm gonna turn a meshes off and I'm gonna skip down to surfaces. So surfaces might look like the same thing, just at a quick glance. But if I turn that hidden geometry on again, and I switch to, I turn my textures off, you can see that it's actually not, it does not have all those polygons. It's just a solid surface. So here's my hidden geometry on and off. You can see there's no extra polygons. So if I turn my section cut off, you can see it got my standing desk, it got my computer box, it got the two structural columns, it got my other standing desk. And uh, that's a much cleaner version that I can begin uh, to work with. So turn those textures back on. You can see it's just an image texture, pretty good resolution. I can actually read the books on my bookshelf if I wanted to. And um, it was also smart enough to kind of delineate what is furniture and what is room. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And let's look at our last one, the one I mentioned when we were in iPad. And that is Apple's version of the scanning app called Room Plan built in. And room plan kind of takes it um, in a way it, it, it does something a little bit different. It already gives a thickness to your walls. So you can see this structural column is built out. If I turn my section cut off, you can see my door here uh, is framed out and my walls and floors have a thickness. There's no ceiling, but that's okay. It's a simple rectangle. Or what I could do is just um, not have a ceiling. So if I turn my color by tag layer or mode on for my, for my tags, you can see here that room plan also broke the scan up into pieces for me. So in this case, I've got the walls separated. I've got the floors separated and the doors even separated. So I think that's pretty awesome that not only did I get it to scan to this sort of level of accuracy, but I did it that quickly and I have it all organized for me. So whichever one you want to use, just simple mesh surfaces, or whether you want to go full detailed, full poly mesh with all that sort of, uh, you know, all the little extra bits that you get from seeing the actual scan, or whether we want to do something a little bit simpler, or, you know, a combination of the methods. I think the, the best thing about this is going to be um, combining methods so that it works exactly for you as you need it. That's it for my quick overview for getting started with the new feature scan to design built into the latest version of SketchUp for iPad. Not only that, but we also got that little bonus where we got to share the model between versions using the latest Trimble Connect integration. So I'm going to leave you there. Uh, the best thing you can do from here is get the latest version, go out and try it for yourself and let me know what you think. 
So I don't know about you, but I've got a little bit of time left in my day. I'm going to go scan some stuff. So I'm going to leave you there. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.